casting braid. Just to come back to casting braid. You don't want to cast 50. 50 is really hard to cast. Cast 65, cast 80. People go, oh, 80. You can only get 250 yards of 80 on this reel. If you fish a lot of drag and you got 80 pounds, do you need any more than 250 yards? No, right? Does everybody get that? The bigger the diameter of the braid, the easier it is to cast, right? And the other thing is, they'll look, people always look at my leaders and they go, you have such short leaders. Does anybody know I have short leaders? They don't want to cast the... I want to go through the guides. Yep, I don't want the knot to go through the guides. The knot goes through the guides, I make a cast, the knot gets caught. When the knot gets caught, the reel speeds up, the line slows down, done. Nightmare, right? So short leaders, a lot of times, that's what's cool about a lot of this stuff, like casting the metal stuff. The metal stuff will go a mile, right? The other thing is, if you're in a boat and you're in your buddy's boat, you're gonna line up to cast into the wind or out down the wind, right? Got a foamer, foamer's right here. We can go around in circles. We're not gonna spook the foamer, right? Go upwind of the foamer, cast downwind into the foamer, boom, you're on, right? I will watch you guys down the wind of the foamers and cast, try to cast in the wind. I'm like, ah, that guy's thinking. He's got his brainiac cap on. You can parallel them too, right? So if the wind's blowing this way and the foamers right here, you can get right here, you can parallel cast these things. That's not going to do the same as this. You come into the wind, especially with poppers, you're going to have a problem. Um, with hooks, like, especially blue fins, those bigger blue fins, you'll see trebles on a lot of stuff that I have. I don't like the swinging hooks. If they eat this the way they should, and when they eat it, they usually eat it all the way down. If the treble goes down and they eat it deep, and they're they're hooked deep, they're just like us. If I walk over to anybody in this room and I grab your ear and I start pulling on you, and I try to pull you forward, are you gonna come with me with your ear? Right? Pain, right? The fish get hooked deep, they'll come to you with the pain. When they come to you with pain, you don't want to be jerking on them constantly. You don't want to do, hey, watch this, I'm going to do short pumps. Put the rod on the rail if you need to, or figure out your stance. A lot of guys right now are using harnesses. I know Greg Stotesbury and his friends are using harnesses with the bigger stuff. Clipping in, real smooth, easy transition, bring the fish up. If you do not hit the fish right, or some does not hit the fish right with the gap, the fun starts. Then you can play with them for as long as you want to play with them because it's not going to be a good time. So point is, remember, those things hurt. You'll see a lot of stuff that I do, like, like a couple weeks ago, we were, uh, we were fishing rigged flying fish, right? And that was fun because with the rigged flying fish, and that's, is, that, is that going on online? No? Get out of the way. So with the rigged flying fish, and if this does, I didn't give the secret up. She's lying. Um, <laughs> what we do is we take the rigged flyer and, and I'll go, I'll meet her around and I'll find fish. I'll throw the rigged flyer out with a floater on it. It's got, it's actually got a bubble on it. And I drive the boat away, right? 200 yards. And then I stop and I got a bigger, I have a bigger outfit. It's like usually an ATD 30. And I slow line the rigged flyer through the fish. Cause they're 100 feet to the surface, 100 feet deep, maybe 150. When they come up and bite the rigged flyer, it's the craziest thing you've seen. Imagine taking a frog and throwing it out and slow winding it over a pond. What happens over the lilies, right? Huge explosions, right? <clears throat> These fish jump completely out of the water and land on this dead flyer because the flyer's dead, right? I've just rigged it so it looks alive and when it's going through the water, it's going through the water like it's swimming. That got to be really popular. It got so popular that everybody told me that the kites didn't work because of the rig flyer. Why didn't the kites work? Because no one did it, right? And there was so many people on the backside of the island. A week, two weeks ago, I counted up over 100 boats in there. Fishing that stuff, you could not fly a kite in there. So it got really, really bad. It was very, very interesting back there. But Back to this stuff, that what's going on out here, there's a couple different lures that you probably want to look at. We talked about a popper. Remember, the hooks that come on the poppers will not handle a big fish. Change the hooks on the poppers, get your owner hooks, get three aughts, four X, whatever you want. Make sure you get stiff hooks that don't open up. The other thing is, on a lot of the stuff that you can get here, make sure that when you buy this stuff, especially if you're fishing in the dark, that you get the stuff that has that UV fluorescence to it. 
and get a UV flashlight. UV flashlight on this, get it, make sure you've got this. Get this thing so it glows. What's the big thing? If there's a lot of current, what do we need? A bigger jig, right? Mm -hmm. So you should have several different sizes of jigs. This is a 3.5 ounce, but I got them all the way up to 8.5 ounces. The, the, the main deal with the fish is that if there's a lot of current, you have to get down to the fish. The other thing is, this is a trick that, you know, some of you guys know, some of you don't, but it's like, if the boat is moving this way and the, the wind's blowing me this way and I drop my lure, where's the lure going? Back, right? So if I'm sitting here like this, I cast out in front of the boat, you know, out and up front, by the time the lure's straight up and down, ready to wind, it's like it covers this thing, it's right here, start winding, bites are, you know, bites are easier. It's a lot harder to hook a fish way behind the boat because you're not at the depth. A lot of times people don't understand is that, oh yeah, no, I've got plenty of line out. Your line is this way, it's not straight up and down. So it's like, that's one thing that I learned. It took me a couple years to figure that one out, but cast way up in front of the boat and once you get to the point, the other thing is if you don't have anything to do at home, mark your line, 100 feet, 200 feet. Right? Just know how much line you're putting out. People just drop down to the bottom. They have no, oh, have no idea how far they're going. Take 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet, one mark, two marks for 200, three marks for three. Just giving you guys a couple pointers that work. It seems to work for me. The other thing that I noticed that I thought was funny is that because I'm like, I would get on boats and I'm not really fishing them, but I'm taking people fishing, people make these super long leaders on these flat balls. And I was like, and there would be a swivel on the top of this leader. The swivel hits the rod tip. I have an eight foot gap and I can't even go through and gap the fish because the fish is still too far away for me to gap it, <laughs> right? So I end up taking these people and going, walk backwards, walk backwards, walk backwards, and you stick the fish and you get them. Point is, if a bluefin, like caught a few of them now, this is a 200 pound, he's this tall. His tail's from here to here. What's different with a bluefin? Big white. If he's this tall, and it's from his mouth to his stomach, how far do you think it is? This far? Maybe, right? Get the point? You don't need a leader that tall. You need a leader that might be four feet, five max. But you need to be able to go. You do not want to try to leader a fish and gap it at the same time, especially if it's two guys on a boat. So watch your leaders and how you're doing with your leaders. Um, <clears throat> the flat fall fishing, Again, I saw all sorts of stuff. The bigger fish with the bigger stuff. Guys are doing this. A lot of guys are doing this. This is an 11 knot, right? This split ring that comes on this, on most of the ones that you get, you want at least a 200 pound split ring. See how, see how big that split ring is? This is a nine knot. It's a swinging hook, okay? As long as these two aren't tangling, I'm good. But again, you can tie your knots. I saw a lot of guys crimping. What knot do we tie? Does anybody know? That's right. Got it. Using swivels, if you use a swivel and use a wind-on, this is a wind-on leader and a swivel. I've got all the twist because the swivel's here. This is a 360 pound swivel. Nothing's gonna happen. This thing was on fire. Big hooks. And one thing with the big hook that you guys should look at, you see the eye right here? And you want to take a look at this later. Which, where's the point of the hook? Is it off point? It's off center, right? You know why it's off center? Because a lot of times, the point of a hook will follow the eye of the hook, especially if the bend of the hook's down, and a lot of times you won't get a real good hook set. When it's off just a little bit, just a little bit. I do this a lot with like mar. I don't I use the circle hooks on the marlin, but a swordfish are going to do this to bend it because if it's off the eye and it's running through it's going to grab something and you'll get a hook set so that's a key point your tackle stores they'll know how to rig the stuff i'm giving you your basic knowledge your rational thought process ask for ask for stuff like this is an a bb2 800 bb2 800 i'll fish 100 pound on it probably got it. I don't know, 600 yards, 100 pound. It gets 38 pounds of drag. It's, they're not going to go anywhere. It's got a two-speed. This is a. This is actually a Kamana I rod. 
if you look, and I could go into a long thing about rods, but this rod's parabolic, right? But it does shut down. The stiffer a rod is on a big fish, the more pressure is on you. If a rod bends and it's got some sort of action, takes the pressure off of you, puts it on the fish. This is like, this isn't like a, a fairy tale, this is truth. I mean, after years and years, you can talk to any of the guys. That's why so many people go to the rail. The rail is your friend. If you guys understand rails, the rail's a fulcrum, right? Does everybody understand fulcrum and levers, right? So what you're gonna end up doing is getting on the rail. A lot of times when you get on the rail, the thing that you have to do is to figure out what's best for you is where you're gonna put your rod. Some guys put it on this arm, some guys put it on this arm. What I saw this year that was pretty interesting is that I saw a guy get into a harness with his rod on the rail and put the rod on the rail and he was all harnessed up instead of standing up to use the rail and it worked perfect for him. Just giving you guys just something I saw that was pretty cool. So depends on where you want to go. The rail is your friend. It's going to take a lot of pressure off you. Bigger rods like that, I would say 100 pound, 150 pound, um, 150 pound liter, you're good. If you want to use 200, in the dark, they'll eat anything. Use whatever you want. The one thing that I see with a lot of that stuff, like I said, the bigger jigs, when they go down, if you hook them deep, they come to you, don't stop winding. Constant, even wind, you're good. You're gonna get, to, you're gonna get what you want. Um, the other thing that's been really uh, fun, and it was fun when they were there, this is just too small of a popper. I didn't have a bigger one in my box at the point. But make sure you have a popper rod this has 80 on it. This is a BB2 800 narrow with 80. I've got 100 pound on the top of this thing. What you want to do is be able to cast a popper. You know, you want to be able to cast a popper. 80 pound braid, you can cast a popper. And again, it comes down to you guys practicing and, and doing it. But um, when you hook a big bluefin and you have people on the boat that might not be able to drive the boat as well, make sure that you have enough, you have enough line on your reels for that kind of deal. Going up and a bigger fish and trying to put a lot of drag on a bigger fish and try to stop them, impossible. And a lot of times what the bluefins don't do is they don't go down, where do they go? They go out. They run as fast as they can out over there, they run over there, they'll run all around the boat and do everything. So what I was gonna have like four setups. I'd have a flat ball setup. I definitely would have some sort of popper setup. The surface iron earlier in the year was really good. And when you pick your surface iron stuff with your, with your jig rods, don't get a rod that's too heavy. Get a rod that bends a little bit so it doesn't hurt you. This is an I-Rod. This is a, I think this one's 40 to 80. It's got a lot of action, but it shuts down, but it doesn't really hurt you that bad. The surface iron bite was really good, and I'm thinking they'll probably still bite it if those fish are come up foaming, but it's just something to happen if you guys are going to go yellowtail fishing and you're on a boat. You've got a surface iron. You've got a surface iron, you've got a popper, you've got a flat ball. And then the other thing that I've been doing a little bit with is I've been doing jerk baits, hard jerk baits. So this is a this is a Dial Saltiga minnow. And this thing is weighted so you can cast it, you can cast it into the foamers. The one thing, depending on the fish you're, saw, you're catching, change the split rings and change the hooks on. Okay, that will cost you. So um, a lot of this stuff like this, this is this is my 50 pound setup. It's got 300 and what, 30 yards and 50 on it. Look how small this is. Check out how much this weighs. Nothing, right? One of the other ones that's super important to have on the boat, Ah, he's really got hooked up there, right? Snipers, you know, what deadfalls, whatever, any sort of iron lure that you got. If the fish are foaming, put a bigger treble on it. If you think the treble looks right, go to the next size. Make sure you got a good split ring on it. This is like a casting dream. You can cast this stuff, and you can cast it far. You'll be hooked up most of the time that you're on a boat. This little reel right here is a Dauntless. It's an accurate Dauntless. 
This thing will put out 32 pounds of drag. This is a I-rod, it's an eight foot I-rod that if you could fish up to 80, this has 80 pound on it. And there's 60 pound leader on this. So I, all I want you guys to do if you can is just take the time and come and look at the stuff. One of the other things that drives people nuts that we fish, just to go through, is I fish these uh, hookup baits all the time. And the tuna love them. They'll eat the hell out of them. The problem with them is, if you see bigger fish, don't throw them, because the hooks will open up. Go to the heavier size hookup baits, and they got bigger hooks, but you can see this is something else that we'll fish for them all the time. This kind of small, got, it's just it's, it's a seven foot six, 764 I-Rod. What, what are you catching on the hookup? On the hookup? Tunas. Tuna. Yeah. Tunas, yellowtail. Uh, my whole, the whole, the whole year, the whole year I've spent just catching tunas this year. You know, I last, I think last weekend was the first yellowtail I caught all year. Caught on a patty, on a hookup bait. So when you say you change out the hook, what, what are you changing them out to? Um, usually what I'm doing is I'm changing them out, like on a hookup bait you're going to go to the next size and he has stiffer, he has stiffer hooks the, the, the heavier they are. But if the other stuff, I do use pretty much owner, and I use owner 4Xs. But are you still using treble? Or? I use trebles on a lot of stuff, and I use single, I use mostly trebles. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah.